This week in the Fancy Stitch Combo Series, I'm going to show you how to work the Daisy Stitch, which is a really pretty fancy stitch. Um, I'll show you how it looks in a couple of different yarn and needle combinations, but I'll let you know this stitch does have a little bit of curling to it. After you block it, it will lie pretty flat. It's Depending on the yarn and needle size you use, you may get a little bit of curling. And if you want to use this stitch for something like a scarf or a dishcloth, your best bet is to go up a needle size from what you normally might use because that will help it um, lie flatter. Tighter gauge will cause more curling. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the stitch looks like. Here's the stitch in a bulky yarn, size 10 and a half needles. And this yarn is a little bit fuzzier than the other example I'm gonna show you. But you see you have these kind of flowers growing up out of this diagonal line in the work. It is pretty. And the back of the work is textured, is the most I can say. Let me show you a different example of one that's um, not as fuzzy of, of a yarn. You see you have the diagonal lines and the fancy little flowers growing up out of the diagonal lines. And you see we do have a little bit of curling going on here. And this is much easier to see. The back of the work is textured, but without the fuzz of the, um, the wool and alpaca yarn, you can see this is much more of a distinctive pattern. Okay, the instructions for this are in the video description below as well as on my website. To get started, I went ahead and did the long tail cast on to cast on uh, a multiple of four plus one. And in this case, I've done 13 stitches. And then the setup row is to knit one, purl back across all stitches, and then knit one. So on the wrong side rows, you always knit these two stitches and purl everything else in between. So that's why you get the curling on this, is because this is what I would call a stockinette based stitch. Okay, I'm gonna start out by knitting one. The next thing I do is I'm going to knit three together, but there's something fancy I'm gonna do with that. So a normal stitch goes in like this. Knitting two together goes through two stitches. I'm going to knit three together. And I just split the yarn, let me try that again. Okay, I am not going to pull those finished stitches off the left needle. Instead, I'm going to yarn over, pull the yarn forward between the two needles, and go into those three stitches again. So I'm going to knit three together the same stitches twice. Okay, then I can pull those stitches off the needle. And the stitch count stays the same the whole time because I did a double decrease with the knit three together, but I've increased it twice in that um, same stitch. Don't worry if that's confusing, you'll get it here in a sec. Next I purl one, and I'm going to do the same knit three together fancy thing again knit three together, leave those three stitches on the left needle, yarn over, and then work those three stitches again. If you're a tight knitter, you will benefit from using sharp tapered needles for this. Yarn forward. Whoops, I did not do a purl one. You have to purl one between the knit three together combination. Knit three together yarn forward, knit those same three stitches together again. And then when you get to the last stitch, you're going to knit it. Every row, the first and last stitch are knit. And then on the wrong side rows, you're going to knit one, purl to the last stitch, and knit one again. And this is actually, let me see, this is a four stitch combo, but every right side row is basically work the same, just a little bit different order to create the diagonal. And that's it, the daisy stitch.